Good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome again to WK Live. Um, so today we have our new camera guy, Punch, behind the cameras. Um, we have April and Kev um, handling the recording. And today we're talking about uh, a project, a competition project um, in Shenzhen. And so this one's interesting because we actually have eight days to do this project. And so the project is the CUHK um, Medical School. Um, our medical campus in Shenzhen, in Longkang District. And with us today is, we have Fur, we have Riddell, we have Melo, we have Yo, we have Dan. And so we were, we started a bit of discussion yesterday, you know, just looking at the documents for the competition, um, look, checking out the site, you know, seeing, you know, the background, the program and all that. And we told ourselves, we gave ourselves a day, you know, for everyone to come up with an idea, Hopefully today we get, you know, six new ideas and we can mix and match and then find something that kind of just fits, you know. And I think it's very interesting because, like, we're trying to show everyone what kind of, like, process we go through, especially when we start a project. And so hopefully, you know, um, you all get something, you know, um, listening, to us, listening to us argue today and whatever um, and see how it goes. And so to start the project, I think Melo is going to introduce things about the site and then hopefully you guys can, you know, um, learn a bit more about it and follow as we develop this project further and further and mm -hmm. hopefully it's something we can win. Cool. So it's just a very quick introduction about the Longang district. Uh, so it has seven communities under its jurisdiction and actually the meaning Longang means dragon mound in Chinese, um, which might be a bit of a plug in for later. But the population is 2.5 million, and the area of the Longang district is 56.03 square kilometers. Um, this is just. Um, so this is just a sh uh, kind of map of showing what Shenzhen has looked like of, uh, in the last 30, uh, 32 years of development from 1984 to 2016. It's a bit muffled, uh, a bit blurry, but what you can see is the, the amount of development that's happened in the city. Um, so yeah, a lot more buildings, a lot of green has been kind of replaced by, by the city. Um, Okay, here, uh, this is the site showing the 10-year development. So from the right, you can see uh, there, there's much, that, uh, there's, that, that it doesn't have that much of development. Uh, then from an, in a span of 10 years, they managed to finish uh, almost all of the campus. Uh, next. Here, uh, as you can see, on the farther right, that's the whole development of the CUHK campus. Um, and then on the left, that is our site. It is bounded by the mountains. And then, as you can see here, if you're going to look at it, there's a water pipe going here that bisects the site. And then the site is divided into two. The first bid is the one at the south part, and then the second bid is the north part. The closest road that they want to have an access to is the park highway or the park road. And then the secondary road is on the farthest right of the site, which is the supplementary road. Here, as you can see here, there's already an existing campus that they want to retain, but they also want us to redesign it. And then everything can be uh, redesigned as long as it's inside the red line. Then there's the Egongji Mountain, then Olympia Hotel. So that's why it's um, Dragon Mound, because it's bounded with a lot of mountains. Just one thing to add, actually, is um, the lower side, which is the south campus, is about 15 hectares. And then this, this north campus is 4 hectares. The way they want us to divide it is in the north campus will be more of the accommodations of the students and the faculty, whereas the south part is more about the learning complex. Um, so what's interesting is the fact that we have the reservoir in the middle and we have this terrain. It's, it's something that we would like to uh, maintain and somehow work with. Um, another thing that was mentioned was uh, 
how they want us to stick close to the Lingnan characteristics, which is kind of like Cantonese uh, style of architecture. So just kind of like a few things to mention is like the main doors uh, entering the building should face south for prosperity. Um, alleyways historically um, had openings which would allow for ventilation of the of the buildings that would wall this this alleyway on either side of it as well as materiality so that's one thing that they want us to stick close to about what's what's local and what's uh, available in the vicinity um, one other point of interest was the Lingnan garden so what would happen with these kind of gardens the way that they're laid out is you would have the plants being protected by the building so essentially a courtyard so kind of taking this courtyard in these Chinese gardens, how can we apply that to the site? Um, secondly, um, it's native local species to use, same with the materiality, it's about using what's there and uh, presenting what's there. Uh, proximity to bodies of water is another thing. Um, so the site is perfect because we have the reservoir in the middle. So it's, it's making use of that um, and how it can apply to, to this uh, kind of style. Um, and then, uh, just a few images of kind of materiality um, for the roof, or you know, if we can use this in a modern way somehow, that'd be really interesting. There's the obviously the clay kind of terracotta yeah. army. Somehow, if there's a way that this can maybe be a, uh, a cladding material or a floor tile, there's a lot to play with actually, just because the textures are so rich. Um, another typical material for the Lingnan kind of architecture is. Even though they call it green brick, it's actually grey-ish. Um, but obviously, in a contrast to the nature, it creates quite a, quite a nice contrast. And these kind of flourishes with kind of window opening, openings in, in the facade. If we can somehow bring this into uh, the design. Um, the brief wanted us to stick close to Chinese kind of aesthetics as well. So this is kind of mm -hmm. perfect for, for the kind of uh, design side of things. Um, so in designing, we considered um, culture of Chinese. So one is the copy culture and the Chinese natural process or the practice. So we can see here now that Chinese is to, to copy is to respect the author. And the natural process is how they, how they accept and yield the way of universe. So in this area, um, the Daphne oil painting, at some point, 60% of the oil paintings in the world are coming dito. Then, it starts from 20 artists, then it's And by 2014, 7,000 artists now were based in the Daphne. Next. So, as a translation sa, sa project, we imitate the natural form sa landscape dito sa structure namin. And... To copy something and show respect to the author of the mismo site. Next. So this is one thing we're trying to connect it to a previous project that we had, which was making use of the terrain. Um, in this case, actually, this was fronting a, a cliffside beach where the beach is at the bottom. But if we flip this around and said actually the reservoir was at the top. Um, so actually at the top level, it would be low-lying type of buildings and actually the campuses, the learning campuses would, would, cut, that would tear us down in the same way that the terrain does. Um, we could create different kind of um, blocks but then still maintain the nature in between. So there's still what we would call potentially these courtyards which would be surrounded by, these, by the buildings on either side. Okay, going to our next concept, uh, one of the key aspects here is community-based wellness, connecting with nature, uh, enriching culture, uh, nurture the future, and education. Uh, since Chinese has their own history about medicine, our, co our concept here is living traditions. Since uh, traditions are handed down orally or by practical means. It is a lifelong process, and not just it is not just a form of uh, memoir or something that is forgotten of the past. Uh, it puts emphasis on how uh, past knowledge can 
be bridged with new technologies to solve problems of the modern world. Right, next. Okay. Okay, so one of the kind of intangible cultures that's been passed down is the dragon dance, and specifically to the Longang province. Um, they revere the dragon as a, as a sign of auspiciousness. Um, so one of the kind of ideas was maybe looking into the dance itself. Um, so the, the story of the, the dragon dance is that the dragon chases this ball, which is to symbolize like a, a pearl of wisdom. So it's the dragon pursuing knowledge. And since uh, the, the kind of program for this is, is, is a school, it's a university, we thought this would be quite a nice comparison to make. Um, and then looking into that as well, there's different dances um, and dance moves that they do. One of them being the paying of respects, uh, there's the swimming dragon and the conquering of seas. There's more other moves that they do, but it's a way of somehow zoning the space. Can we change this into some sort of tectonic in our architecture? Um, so one example of that would be the paying of respects. So this would be down at the highway. We mentioned, Fur mentioned earlier that this would be the entrance into the site, uh, well, to the, to the lower campus anyway. So what would happen is we'd want this to be the kind of the main learning complex of the building where the potentially the admin is, um, whether it kind of upon entering those kind of functions to the building are available to you when you, when you come in. But then the act of paying of respects. So, it would be like a humbling kind of uh, way of entry. So just this kind of section here, this would be the lower campus. So it, there's a slight and gradual kind of ascend up into the site. So it's kind of like a, I wouldn't say pilgrimage, but some, some way of the sort of um, entering. Journey. Of journey, yeah. So that journey kind of idea um, is emphasized later on when Fur talks about how you move in. but. Not necessarily this being our main entrance, but taking from this uh, the way that the entrance is. This is a bit of a more modern example, actually. That's more something that we might find some more interest in in developing further as an entrance. So here, <clears throat> as a team, we ask ourselves, since we're looking into the micro to micro scale of the project, we started to think, what about the feng shui? What about the Chinese dragons? What about these dragons? There are different types of dragons. And then since we are bounded almost um, 60 to 70% of the edge of the site with mountains, why not make use of it? Since there's a, actually a misconception between water and mountain and water as the source of key, but it's actually the mountain as the source of energy, which is the key. So if this is the mountain, then this is your source of key. This is the source of your strength, and this is the source of your force. And since the site, there's a, lo there's a lot of elevated mountains. There's a lot of um, edges that goes into the water. How are we going to relate the mountain into the water? That's why in, Co in Hong Kong, there's a lot of buildings with holes in it so that the dragon mountain can pass through it because the dragon gives the energy, it gives wealth. And then here, the water means wealth. And for me, if we're going to translate it into education, education is wealth. Wealth is knowledge. So the force, the mountain, turning into the water. So the mountain going to the water. What is the process? Maybe we can be the process. The students can be the process. They can be the transitional space. It can be an object, how? So here, um, there's an example of a building in Hong Kong that there's a hole in it. And then, so we, we call, they call it the dragon gates or the dragon holes. So it's a feng shui that allows the dragons to fly from mountains to the ocean. So it's kind of almost similar with the site, although the mountain is not that high, but even if it's a hilly, maybe we can get that concept and put it, it in here through the, the journey or the path that Melo talked about earlier. So we gathered some of the areas from the building. Um, this is not really scaled, but the idea is from the park road, maybe we can make a story, the, the culture or the history of the Longgang uh, and, and an introduction from this point up to the edge of the residential. And then if we're going to revisit the history, or if we're going to alternate it somehow, 
maybe on the other side there's a different story going to the front but that, but the main concept is that all the buildings have holes in it so that everyone can pass through it but it's just the main path but there's a lot of paths around it like the open spaces they can go through it but if you want to 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 see or to move through the main story of the campus you can you can start here so it's a, it's a very hum, humbling experience from the start and then as you go inside it's like you're a kid and then you're going to adulthood and then you're going to end up into the faculty which we wanted to have at least a museum somehow although it's not required but some sort of like that so that's yeah so that's that's what we were thinking so it's a different you have various concepts but we ended up merging it together and then let's see how it goes from it yeah Radel, you have something yeah, I need the photo but I was not able to stand. It's fine. Yeah, fine. But I can show it. I can explain the sketches. Let's talk about it here. Before I talk about this, I'll just yeah, yeah. Inspiration. How do I? Why you became of this? Yeah, as I said, right? I and mean, when we talk about education, it's really called to be. Okay, cultivation. When, uh, when you cultivate, it's like you enhance. How, uh, how one of these things is like we'll have balance, right? balance in life, and then we can use this, but the architecture balance in nature, and harmony, harmony in life, right? Uh, and sure. then you sure. have motion also. Sorry, uh, so thank you. Can, thank you. Yes, you have motion also, so to get the wellness and things. Right? Then of course of that all of that is more of talking about the wellness. Mm. Okay. So all these things will be ref uh, we want to reflect in our design, architecture and nature probably combining right. So it's more like biophilic design. And probably we know that on the facade, and of course the affinity of the people. People already really uh, like going to nature, like trekking and these things. So we want to create spaces that connect with the nature. So our building, our spaces connect with the nature, with the surrounding. Right? You have indoor spaces for uh, social activities, social spaces, uh, like a, a closed garden, right? open court for social spaces. Yeah, so that's uh, how we uh, try to understand these things. Okay, now for the sketch. As I mentioned before, this one is actually like our site, right? And they have a university here. Actually, this one is part of this school, the Conservatory of Music, I remember, mind you. This one is also a school. So this whole thing is the whole development. This one is part of the school, the after school. So actually, this one is one. Actually, my you question is, where is the hospital? This one, the existing. It's no, an existing okay. hospital. This one is not actually a hospital. It's a classroom, research. This but every medical campus needs a hospital, right? Yeah, but they don't uh, ask because this one is already um, have a partner. Yeah, in so there's a, there's a hospital yeah, off-site. They have a partner yeah. off-site. It's not yeah. yeah, it's not on-site. So yeah, we have the water, right? We have these things. And if you can see, this one really connects as uh, what the, people, the guys have said. Right? So now, uh, the idea is like, this will be like an organic thing. Right? But of course, I'm just emphasizing, emphasizing the connection. And um, yeah, as much as possible, this one is the pipe, mm -hmm. which they said that you can do these things. Of course, just don't construct. So I'm doing this like a spine, which will connect because this is a government uh, area, public area. They call these public areas, as I explained earlier too. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then so that's the idea. These things is connect, connect, and then this one they have water here, which we can cover actually, because this is a public area. So probably we can have a plaza there. And everything will have the center court, uh, central uh, plaza. So everything will be connected with green. And then this one, and that's why under proposal, these are residentials. 
dormitories mm-hmm. actually mm-hmm. because these were existing dormitory already yeah. so it's like when we design this the proposal is this one is one whole thing because it's actually the same property okay it's like one whole thing probably we can have gardens there and then here also right before they have a road here so the idea is we don't want people uh, cars coming in because this one is sloping already we can level the green so all the cars will be under from here the idea is when you look at this this is connection if you check the design of the conservatory of music this one is already part they don't have barricade or something mm-hmm. it's, it's a part it's connected yeah and then this one is a corner road so all the people will be coming in here going there right that's the connection so they're actually walking from here yeah walking from here so connect connect so the idea is that just connect connect everything and then the bridge you have this right so connections so the cultivate is like we're doing those spaces so probably we're very familiar with uh, the mantra of uh, wt social architecture right like uh, connecting all these things and then yeah if you see the elevation here what we were doing is like that's the mountain like going down like sloping down and then that's the platform that connects on the hospital and then of course we'll erase that so that we can get that gate feeling mm-hmm. that uh, they're, sh- they're showing now for the diagram, uh, the diagram for those connections this is the basic Okay. Yeah. 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 This is the quick sketch. Yeah. Actually, it's like this. Uh, you have squares, right? So basically, the plazas are. That's there. 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 Like that. So this is the plaza, right? If you're connecting there, you have a focal point of the building, okay. and then yeah, same ideas, focal point, focal point of the building. Right. To understand about this, like connecting, because we want the movement, even the architecture, I want to see it like moving, right? The motion, and then the garden, like this garden will come up with the archi- will go up in the architecture, so merging together uh, the landscape. The buildings, yeah. and then uh, um, getting the Chinese tradition, you know. That's why we have courtyards, and because this one will be residential also for the dormitories and things. Okay, can I go back, please? I have a 3D of this one, mm-hmm. you'll understand. There, the arrow. Oh, God. I'm sorry, guys, it's not there, it's a sketch up, but I have a screenshot. Yeah. But the idea is like this uh, building, if it's on the ground floor, it's like this. This one will rotate. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, it rotates, rotates. Of course, this is just a representation mm-hmm. square. Actually, I was thinking like a circle. I think it's too much. Mm-hmm. But uh, let's see how we can develop this and those ideas of uh, okay. rotating the building. Okay. Uh, later, I'll just show you the yeah, um, massing it. study so that we yeah. can figure out and visualize how big okay. the buildings are. Not for now. We just get talk about the ideas first. Okay. Okay. So, are we good? Is that it? Yeah. I'm hungry. <laughs> 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 okay, so like, I think, like, those were the ideas that you got and I wrote down some of the things that I think could work for the project. Um, but me in particular, what I did was I went, I called up, you know, some doctor friends and asked them about medical school, right? Mm-hmm. And of course, they don't know what architecture is, so just talking, 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 right? The thing about, you know, doing a master plan is that you want to have sort of like an organizing principle. Right? You always begin with that. So we're all talking about like, you know, ideas, you know, elements. These are all elements. eh? There are various elements of like what it can be. But the first thing is like, how do we organize the entire site, right? And so I was looking at the different buildings on site. And so from what I gather is that as a medical student, 
at least in China, especially you're staying in the dorms and all that, you spend most of your time in the library. So the library is the focus of the, camp, of the campus life, right? Because doctors, they study overnight, they just stay in the library, right? The second thing is though, that there's winter in Shenzhen still, right? So you don't want to study outdoors, it's too cold, you know, you have to be protected from the wind, the rain, everything. And also you want to have, you know, that comfort of that. So when we started to discuss this, they were saying like, it would be nice to have, the, the best thing that you can get is a nice library. Like it's a big library, it's the hub and everything. But then I started to think about this idea about, you know, like I said, we want it to be flowing and all of that, right? So that's from one aspect, right? Coming from the school aspect, the, the program, basically the medical aspect. And then another aspect is we, of course, you guys were looking into Chinese culture, right? And when we talk about culture, of course, there's a Chinese civilization is 5,000 years old. Um, the thing is, in particular with medicine, the difference between Chinese medicine or traditional medicine and Western medicine is that Western medicine is immediate, right? It's a superficial, like, okay, you, you have something broken, we fix you, mm -hmm. right? But traditional medicine looks at the reason, at the causation of what's wrong, like, why are you feeling sick? So that's what they fix. They fix the underlying problems, right? So, like, you know, in the end, as I said, you know, it's about balance, it's about harmony, right? It's about creating, you know, like, you know, your hand might be painful, but actually it's your elbow that's wrong or something. So you don't fix the actual surface, but you see the framework of your entire body as one, right? And of course, you know, this idea about Chinese acupuncture and then urban acupuncture. And so I started to look at, you know, this idea of Chinese medicine and traditional medicine as how it's about the flows of your meridians, right? It, that's why you have the acupuncture and all that. You have your meridians going through, the, the image you showed about through your entire body, right? And so I started to think, why can't the library actually be like a network so that it's everywhere, you know? So like maybe the library is sort of like a nervous system for the campus, right? Of course, that's them saying that you don't do a 100,000 square meter library, right? But it can be in a way, like you almost have multiple libraries, like it's linear. So you mix the library with the public space, with the gardens, with the courtyards, with the common grounds. And that's what connects everything. So when you're actually walking around, so it, was, it goes back to also this idea of like Chinese nature. What is a Chinese garden, right? A Chinese garden likes to replicate nature but in a controlled environment. That's why you always see the yeah. towers, the bridges, those walkways. It's always like you're enjoying nature from a safe environment, from a sheltered, protected area. So I started to think about these, you know, like why, what if we have this kind of like almost like a library garden park that winds around the entire site that connects everything. So when I'm in this building and I want to go to the library, there's actually, it's pretty near. Right? I mean, you can walk around, you can go find different spaces, but there's actually like a library near you, wherever you are on the site. And so instead of like imagining one big library hub, the library hub, you stretch it, right? And then you have entry points or like the moon gates, the doorway you're talking about, that's called the moon gate. So you have moon gates into this like, almost like a linear network of a courtyard, which connects everything, right? And so then you have, this library slash park, almost like indoor, outdoor, where you have walkways and like um, pavilions and stuff. Because actually what they're doing in the library is not the books. What they're doing there is they need spaces to study. And they need a diversity of spaces. You need like rooms for like 20 people. You need rooms for like five people. And so, and it's always full. Even when I was in, it's always full. It's always fully booked these rooms because like everyone wants to stay in the library. And so there's this progression, right, of how, you know, like the different types of spaces. So the library now becomes a very rich diversity of spaces intertwined with the gardens, which by itself also serves as a nervous system or the meridians of the entire site, right? So you can almost imagine if, you know, the people, the students, the faculty, they're flowing through the site. You know, this is the, these are the meridians that bring them about. And then of course, there's this richness about like how you say when you're doing, you know, 
a university is actually about learning from each other. You actually learn more from your peers than from the actual subject matter, right? And so you have this common ground where everyone gathers, you know, everyone mixes. And it also talks a lot about Chinese culture in terms of like the general Chinese culture where the main goal of Chinese civilization is social harmony, right? Even now, even you know, the, what Xi Jinping is pushing for. It's not about, you know, so that's the difference between Western culture and Chinese culture, right? Western culture in particular enjoys individualism, right? So it's individual freedom. And like I said, when you're looking at Asians or Confucian or Chinese culture, you're looking at the undercurrent. The undercurrent is always society. So that's the so social harmony we're talking about. That if everything is flowing smoothly, you know, the individual things don't matter as much because it should also be smooth because the underlying, you know, um, current, right, is flowing well. And so I think we, you know, that's why we talk about these social spaces, these public spaces in harmony with nature because that allows us to create, you know, a very harmonic or like a very balanced environment. And I think dealing with, you know, this reservoir or the mountain and then the reservoir behind, right? I think it would be nice if it's, you know, like you were saying about the journey, but I think it would be nice if it almost feels like, you know, it's almost like a sort of enlightenment as you go through. So as you walk through that linear park, as you're traveling around it, there's almost this feeling of like, you know, different things you're learning. It's like the, when you talk about Buddhism, right, the sevenfold path or things like that. Even in Taoism, they have that. So there's like different, you know, um, la layers of understanding. And which is what university is, right? Your first year, your second year, third year. And then you constantly improve, you know, your, your mindset. And so it almost feels like today I'm staying in library A, and then tomorrow I'm in the blue library, next week I'm in the green library. So there's different spaces that you actually start to understand, start to form. Of course, they're near the different buildings, the different campuses. And that creates a more complete learning, right? Because a lot of students who experience campus life were stuck in one place. This is where we go, that's every day. Actually, you're, you spend five years in a campus, but you hardly see much of it, right? But now you're telling them, maybe you can have a better, like a more complete experience of your campus, right? So that's what I'm looking at. Um, but I'm also looking at, in a way, how we can actually not touch the mountain or the hill. So you were showing how you can actually put the buildings by the hill. I actually want to remove the buildings from the hill and say, can we retain that hill? Can we just make that, like, I mean, of course, we have penetrations there that connect to the camp, to the dormitory site and all that. And maybe, like, you know, if that, the mass is the hill, we have, like, this linear part of the library slash garden that connects and then even crosses the bridge, becomes functional, and crosses the dormitories. So that becomes, like, a lifeline, and then it spreads out again on the other side, right? But the hill itself, we preserve it if we can, because then you have this, like, immense area of greenery Right, as a backdrop for you know, everything that's going on. And so it's almost like more development near the road, and then gradually you know, it fades into a more natural you know, space. Right? Then you go to the reservoir and then of course the living quarters. But also I think in terms of like this, like a symbolic feeling of like, you know, when, even architects, when we start learning, we want to do so many things. You, know, we want, you have so many interventions, you, know, you draw too much, you, know, you design too much, but then you become more subtle you become more sure of yourself slowly, you master your craft until you become almost one with nature. And I think even medicine is that way, that you know, in terms of wellness, right, you can cure yourself, you fix your body, you do surgery, you, 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 you tie everything together. But then after that, what do you do? You do maintenance, right? You do wellness, you do so like, there's a gradual transition from like a more active, you know, space or lifestyle to a more naturalistic, or more harmonious environment. And so I almost feel like if we can, I would like to retain that part of the site itself and say we focus development here in front. Right? Um, and also looking at the edges of that, like what the edge of that hill would be, you know, with the water, what that edge could function as, what the edge with the flat land will be. Like how does the architecture actually evolve in terms of like looking at it from a master planning point of view, right? How it slowly, like, you know, you can almost feel like it's fading into that thing. So that's what I want, or I feel like 
can be an idea that actually melts slowly there. And so that's what I'm thinking. So, bahala na kayo. <laughs> I understand that. I agree with you the li with the library. Hans Lee, the head of CT. Yeah. Every weekend, a lot of people. Yeah, the library is the heart. Yeah, they have yeah. the room and it's near the chapel. Even when I was in university, the library was really, it's not even just library, it's called the resource center, right? Like everything is there, you know, you have, it's not the books, sir, it's actually the space for, to learn, you know, because you're all staying in dormitories, eh? right? You're not going home. Most people are staying in the dormitories, like probably, I don't know how many percent of the students, but most of them come from the dormitories. They're not going home to their houses. So, of course, in your dormitory, you have a small space, right? And then, of course, it's not conducive to learning. And everyone has to gather together. That's where they do the libraries, right? Mm -hmm. So I feel like we designed that library well, this yeah. network, or this like, it's almost like a nervous system, and then everything will fall into place. Mm -hmm. Like the different pieces of architecture, different buildings, you know, that will fall into place. But in particular, I think how we lay it out has to have this kind of like winding, you know, flowing way, because like I said, you want to create a sense of harmony that it's not very, you know, um, but it's also about making these buildings, these different buildings, a bit more compact, mm -hmm. not spread out. Like the space in between the buildings almost is like the library, because it can't be too long as well, right? Mm -hmm. So it can't be like this building here, this building there. It's more of like arranging, I think, the buildings almost like together in a way where you're actually like, you have maybe this like certain point of reference where, I don't know, where you can actually have this thing in the middle, right, serve as your common ground, all right. And then this is the thing that we talk about as the, the library space, right. So this becomes, then it connects with like, of course, parts of it will be open gardens and everything, but there's always a walkway that connects you, you know, throughout. So you're always, so it's almost like the core system. And then I think it fades out to the more, you know, the landscape and everything. Right? It fades out to the landscape. So it's not organic in form? Well, I mean, or like I said, be? we can make it organic. Okay. But of course, your buildings will be structured, right? Mm -hmm. So how the edge, I mean, it can be flowing. But my, my point is, like, it's a very compact system, mm -hmm. right? It's not, because, like, a way you do it is you, you spread it out and say, okay, we want to connect everything. That we, we go like connecting things like that, mm. but then it's like, you know. Mm. Um, and I think, you know, even as a student, it would be nice to be able to actually have closer access and you're not late for your next class or anything, right? Mm. So I think that's also interesting, like we plan it in a way where it's like trying to find a center of gravity for the entire campus and saying like, you know, having this space, this common ground busy with people, you know, that's also a good thing because you have interaction, right? You create this like, you know, interactions between the different um, students, the faculty members, and everything is flowing through this area. And then of course, then you have the release valves that allow you to flow out into the, you know, the greater site, if you may, right? But I think this is the interesting part, like what we do with this, I mean, of course, this can be flowing and all that, but that's the interesting part. Like, how do we do this space here, right? the one that connects everyone? This is what I think should be the concept of the site itself. And the buildings are the buildings. Right. So that's the, what I think I should follow. And then, yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. So like, for example, this one, right? It's too winding. It's too detached. So there's no centrality. Right? There doesn't seem to be a parang, like, the density of students in a learning institution, I think it's nice to have people interacting almost. So I think it's almost like, I can almost see it like a small village in a way, mm -hmm. you know, where you have this main street, and then the thing is we're making the main street into a covered space or like a library space, right? And that harkens back to what you were saying about the, the walled or the covered hallways, right? where you actually have a semi-gated like spaces coming in here. Mm -hmm. right? And so yes, you have, you know, it goes out, it, it, it expands outwards, but there's a protected core 
there's a protected core of space where everyone comes together. And so I think that's what makes it interesting and I think it's a strong concept. That's, that's something we can work on. Okay? Okay. So okay. I can So, go na. Okay. Tops na ako, ah. It's my job, ah. I will, I will show them the massing. Yeah, yeah. So we can building. mix. Uh, yeah, we can put the in the buildings. How we can. The uh, I don't have the topo yet. But yeah. what we did is I asked them to do the massing based on the floor yeah. area. Let, let's compact, nice, huh? that's let's that's compact them. And then the... Yeah, floor areas, of course, they did not separate. I told them just that how big is the library, how big... Mm -hmm. you know, the I really feel like the one-page concept. You got... Well, at least we have a recording, so we know what I just said. So mm. we can just make a nice presentation about that. Right? Um, I think the idea of this being a journey also is good. How it's like, you know, like, um, like you said, the dragon, it looks like a dragon also in a way, right? The meridians, you know, the, the, it's this like sinuous flowing line, I think, that differentiates Chinese culture, right? It likes, Chinese culture doesn't like abrasive things. It likes, you know, smooth, you know, flowing things, you know, that's, so even our mountains, when we draw it, it's always like, that, that's the culture, it's the nature of, the Chinese civilization. And so I think, you know, yeah, it's a journey, you know, going up after that pearl of enlightenment. Like I said, different paths of enlightenment and stuff like that, right? So I think it's interesting. But of course, we don't lose sight that there's still a library, mm -hmm. except that the library is linear, mm -hmm. right? Instead of like making it the one big building, we make it linear, right? And this, the entire thing is not covered, right? Maybe like if I say this is the library thing, maybe 50% of that. The rest is like small gardens within that. So the library is like winding around small courtyards, small walkways, you know, like, you know, and then you have different points of like, probably like if these were your, I mean, if these are our buildings, you will have different points of compaction near where the buildings will be, right? Where you have the main, like maybe the main buildings of the library are, you know, like, I think that is also needed in terms of like, um, Maybe like there's a library here, right? There's there's actually a, a building center somewhere here, you know. So like these are parts of it that actually are in, in almost like a more solid, right? Like you go inside there, then the rest is more of like okay, you have walkways, you have this like garden centers here, you know, um, connecting everything. Mm -hmm. So it's something like that. I think that that's what I would be looking for. Like you have this like connecting, and then of course you have gardens and everything outside, like, mm -hmm. and then like maybe you have like your even your canteen. So that becomes your like the the common ground is this ner central nervous system, mm -hmm. right? So that's what we're designing, not the buildings. And Actually, what Will was really explaining you the Chinese culture, it's like meandering. Yeah, it's meandering. It's meandering. Uh, every the, the reason why they have those things, everything mm -hmm. have focal points. Yes. Right? And then when you're walking, you'll pass. And then suddenly there's a pocket. Mm -hmm. That's what he's talking yeah. about. That's why they have those moon Yeah. So you can exit. Mm -hmm. And it's almost, so there, the Chinese garden is almost like trying to fit a Chinese painting into your garden. There's a, there's a controlled scene, right, where, you know, it's replicating a natural setting, but you're in the comfort of your walkway or your path or whatever. So that's the difference. It's like, it's a, it's a more culture experience. Like you want nature, but in your own terms, kind of like almost that kind of like, um, it's a bit like Italian gardens actually, as opposed to like the English and French. French is very structured, but it's open, right? Mm -hmm. So it's different, but it's most like the Italian where you have the small villas and small things, um, small patios and stuff like that. Yeah. So can you start working now? Thanks, sweetie. Right? I think yeah, this works. Yeah. I think we can pursue this. Um, in terms of the materiality, I like saying like what we did for the um, for the was it the airport or the hospital? We just did the, the airport. Uh, hospital. The hospital, the right? We used the clay walls. tiles as the wall. I think we can do that also. That that should be interesting. But I think we also should not lose in uh, lose mind of the fact that we want to do something that is progressive. Right. It, this is not a museum, okay? It's not supposed to be like 
super quiet also in a way. So that there has to be something that also says that this is state of the art. That you, so the difference here is that you actually want to build the best university in the world. It's not good. It's not okay. This is good enough. Right? There's a difference, right? There's a difference there. I mean, the, the language of what we build in the Philippines and what you build there is that they actually want to build a world beater, a world class university. And so that's the big difference, right? It's not about just making it quiet and all that. Because a quiet building is fine if it's one individual building, right? But then as a whole campus, you need this, like, something also that's very, you know, eye catching. And that's what also one of my friends was talking about, was that he was saying, like, you know, as a faculty member or a school administrator, you also need something to put in your brochure or your website to get students to come in. You need that wow image that says, you know, you want to study here. And I feel like this library thing is very interesting. You know, that's something that's, so it almost can be like that this library thing is architecturally the interesting part in so many ways. And we can certainly do a lot of things with that. Like you said, as a, you, know, it can, you can almost imagine it like a bridge, right? Like a tower bridges and all those things. So it can be that way. This is the pathway, this is the path of enlightenment mm -hmm. for all I know. So I think it fits, uh, you know. <laughs> Definitely no ideas about replication, that doesn't work. Um, that's out the window, throw that out. Um, the, so what did I say? The Dragon of the Pearl works for me. The Lingnan Garden, I think, is something we should explore more. That one you should look more into. Mm -hmm. um, the, so for me, the elements that I was looking at was like, you know, the materiality of terracotta and ceramics. So ceramic is terracotta. Ceramic is actually the most technically sound material. The space shuttle uses ceramics because ceramics don't burn, right? So ceramics is, ceramic is a very high-tech material, okay? And yet it is also very traditional. It's the beauty of ceramics, okay? And Chinese, of course, is the, um, that's where ceramics came from. Um, you know, the, the idea of gateways, you know, those moon gates I want to work with. This definitely is like the idea of the Lingnam Garden um, works for me. Um, and, you know, it as a journey, you know, the idea that you're cultivating, I think is also important. Cultivation, you're growing. Cultivation is an, in Chinese terms, there's this like idea of like you go up to the mountains, you cultivate your chi, you become like a holy person or whatever. Like cultivate your kung fu skills, you know, like whatever. But I mean, like, what is this idea that you're you're, you're elevating yourself from normalness or normalcy, right? So you're becoming. So like, there's this idea of literati of a gentleman, you know. Um, so in ancient China, I think, you know, Europe became about knights killing each other in like until the 1500s, right? China got through that about maybe 500 AD. That's done already. And so they super, after, that, no, sorry, around 1000 AD, that they superseded the military with the gentleman class. So the upper echelon is the educated class. The military is lower. So they got through that earlier. Um, so it's almost like the, in British terms, it's like the Victorian era, where you have like an educated elite, where you know, you like learn, trying to learn and everything. So that's Chinese culture. Ever since there's always this examination where you pick out the brightest minds. And so it's about cultivating yourself to get to that level, right? So beyond, you know, a normal person. So that's how learning is done also in certain ways, right? So yeah, I think that works. Yeah. And then maybe we can, yeah, let's work on this now. And then tomorrow we can have the second part of this video. Okay. Right? Okay. Well? We'll just develop one. Video. Yeah, we have the massing. I, want, I, I think we should have the massing in by tomorrow already yeah. so we know how to bring them together. Yeah. Then lay them out on the site so we can see how we actually want to lay it out, how big the, buildings, the building blocks will be. But I think this idea is sound and probably would be pretty unique in terms of like at least if they're gonna choose nine entries, they won't choose like nine of the same, right? They're just like, oh, this one's like this one. Right? So like, it's, it's, it's